Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below. Nickel Normal. First play I'm going to show is the Buck Slant Show 2. Now, a lot of people might know this already. I think it also used to be called the Buck Slant 3, but I'm not entirely sure. Now, this play here is probably going to be most effective um, against a... I mean, the running back's on the other side, so that's a good thing. If it's a play action, that's going to be huge for the Blitz. And if it's an empty backfield, that's going to be huge for the Blitz. All those scenarios, it should get in relatively quickly with, without being touched, to be honest, the way that I'm going to set it up. Uh, but one of the things that I wanted to point out about this defense that really makes it nice is it looks like a cover 4 or a cover 2 because you have two high safeties. Um, this guy right here, Obviously, he's just going to drop down a little bit to the outside. I don't know how good Aloka is. He's kind of slow, but we'll hope that he can get that job done. Uh, but the setup is real nice. So people will be looking at this. They'll think they might have, you know, because cover three has some natural uh, deficiencies. There's certain things that beat cover three. So your opponent might be diagnosing it for cover three. And then, you know, like uh, this defense might uh, give them trouble. So if they think it's a cover three and they try to do like a comeback route or an out route, this guy might actually jump that, which is great. Um, so that's one thing that's a real big benefit to this. Um, you know, Perriman up the seam right there on a streak would probably give this defense issues. But since you can't pre-diagnose it as easily, that's uh, going to make it kind of tough. So one of the things I'm going to do, uh, the real adjustments are, are real simple. All I really want to do is shift my line. So I'm going to hit the uh, the L1 button. It's going to bring in my menu. And then I have uh, two things I want to do. I want to slant right and I want to spread right. So I'm going to hit L1 and then I'm going to hit left on the right stick to shift my line over. Hit L1 again. And then I'm going to hit uh, right on the, did I say left on the right stick? I meant right on the left stick and then right on the right stick. Uh, to slant let the slant right now you see when I did that second adjustment it takes this defensive end out of his zone that's fine I just want to go over to him readjust him I'm gonna, hit, I'm gonna put it uh, I'm gonna hit X when I'm on him and then I'm gonna bluff blitz and it's gonna put him right back into that seam flat but that little bit of a hesitation that he's gonna do before he drops back is going to help with this blitz so then I'm also gonna bring this guy down I can hover over the over the guard tackle gap here it's actually I'm sorry that's the guard tight end gap or I can hover over the middle if you don't want to be out of the position to get drop back it's really up to you but either way you want to get down into the line I typically like to be over here uh, being that pyramid is over here uncovered I might come over here just and then try to drop into his area um, if you also wanted to you could move Aloka down a little bit but that'll give away your cover three but it'll also get in the lane a little bit if somebody's trying to quick throw so that's really up to you but that's the adjustment it's really simple we'll go ahead and we'll let the computer run this as you can see we're getting heat right away my guy gets open though but since he's running he can't do anything about it so we'll go ahead and we're going to run this a couple more times like I said, it's up to you to press. It's up to you if you want to, you know, if you want to do the uh, the hard flats. Uh, that's sometimes that's a good idea. Go ahead and rock this. And they're just giving chase right away. I mean, there was a guy. So we'll go ahead and we'll pick the play if I can find it. I think I might have flipped it here by accident. Um, like I said, it's the one at the top there, the FS Fire 3 Press. So the original look that I had, the safety comes down just like you see there. Um, you can let him come down by himself. That's fine. But this guy really is going to be my my do it all. I mean, he's going to be, uh, you know, he's going to be everything to me. Um, this entire defense revolves around that safety. So like I said, make sure he's your best player. I probably could have put Keanu Neal there who's a really good player but it doesn't really matter he can stay where he's at but you can see the strong safety who typically in the defense that i run uh, in cover three is typically a down the box guy so you want to make sure that he's got some athleticism and range too so i'm happy that i have count o'neill back there but either way uh, the only adjustments i really made in the previous setup was i would move this guy out a little bit just because i wanted him to have a little more opportunity to get to the sideline seeing as he's a linebacker and they don't really cover that well unless you have a really good athlete with a really high zone uh, they typically don't cover to the edge really well so i like moving him out a little bit it's really up to you how far i find that for run defensive purposes moving him out here is probably best so that you still have a pretty good run setup because what you're essentially trying to do here is you're creating what looks like a four four because um, three four itself is good but now that you have a safety down the box it really looks like a four uh four linebacker four defensive end set much better against the run um, and then you notice I also move this safety down a bit, uh, which, you know, that's up to you. He's fine where he's at. He'll get decent. Um, he'll decently contain the run, but he'll get a better pass rush if you're going to send him in on a pass rush anyway, uh, moving him out here and down the line of scrimmage. He'll get that, that edge a little bit better. But that's up to you, and that's not what I'm going to do here anyway. Uh, typically, if it's a uh, two tight end set like it is here with a running back in the backfield, I'm going to go ahead and I'm gonna hit A, and I'm going to hit up on the right stick, and I'm going to man him to the running back. Um, and that's basically going to make him that much better against run defense. It's going to take away any flats or any, uh, you know, any type of flat routes that this guy might be uh, employed in. Uh, man cover, he's, if he's in a, a uh, 
<laughs> slurring my words. If he's in a um, a screenplay, he'll he'll play that better too. Um, say he's to the screen to the right here, he'll come and blow that up. Uh, but he's really going to do everything. If there's a slot receiver, say this is a three wide receiver set, and I use this. You can see in that video, I use this for everything up to a four wide receiver set. But if it's a slot receiver, I'll man him to the slot receiver. I'll show you that later on. When there's a slot receiver right in this area here. I'll man him in like a cross man scenario where I'll kind of keep him in the middle and he'll shut that down. Or if I bring him outside on him and he says he's running the outside route, he'll shut that down too. And then that'll basically leave me, say there's a single tight end in that scenario where I'll cover the tight end uh, as well as the middle. So um, it's like I said, it's a really flexible defense, but unlike the cover two invert style of defenses that I put out this year, you're not going to have to worry about over the middle. Like in the, in the cover two invert plays that I put out, uh, which are also very effective, really good. I'm not trying to say that they're not. But um, in those plays, I have to be aware of the deep half of the field, which sometimes can get you beat if you're not, if you don't play that well. Where this one here, you don't. So this one here is like that. It's a really shut down defense. Um, it's in a lot of playbooks, though. It's the 4 4. I'm pretty sure it's also in the Ravens playbook. Um, if you guys know any other playbooks that's in, please comment in the comment section below and let me know. I think the Browns might have it. I know the Browns had it last year, but I haven't used the Browns defensive playbook this year, so I'm not 100%. But either way, I got a defensive play for you out of this formation. This is a really good formation when it comes to things like stopping the run, whether it's inside runs or outside runs. But outside runs specifically um, is where it does most of its damage or it has its most use. Uh, but my favorite play for sure is the cover two invert. Try to put your best guy here, whether it's a cornerback or a safety or whatever you have. If, if, you, if, you, if you're trying to stop the run, maybe it's a safety. If you're trying to stop the pass, maybe it's a corner. That might be the best way to put it. So the set's real simple. Uh, you can spread your linebackers, and you can see how wide they get, and how to do that is just R1, and then up on the left stick to spread the linebackers. You can also spread the, um, the defensive line, which is L1, and then up on the left stick. Uh, that's really gonna be up to you. I mean, you, you, you know, at least, I don't wanna say at least you're vulnerable up the middle, but you have a gap here. Uh, but it's really up to you. If you wanna spread the linebackers and pinch, the defensive line. If you don't know where the run's gonna go, this is a really good look too. It's gonna make it hard to run up the middle and outside. Uh, pressing here is not the best idea because your um, your cornerbacks are gonna have a hard time covering deep that way. So if anything, I would say base aligning uh, is probably the better way to go. Uh, but I like, you know, it depends on, this defense is, is, is really uh, flexible. I think just having these linebackers out, I just wish they were down a little bit further down um, than they are, but having these linebackers out is probably the best way to run because like I said, first of all, they have to cover those zones outside. They have to get uh, wide a little bit, which unless you have athletic linebackers might be hard to do, uh, but either way, that's uh, that's where I want them. I, I want it to look somewhat like this, and this is going to be the best way to stop inside and outside runs. Now, as far as my mid-read guy here, um, it's up to you if you can leave him like that. Uh, if, say, Ingram, you know, runs something, like say this is like a cover 4-4 verticals or something, and he fo he'll follow a guy up the middle all the way, and he'll complete, uh, he'll, he'll fill this hole to an extent. He'll complete what looks like a cover 3 um, if somebody is in his area going deep. Now, what he won't do is if somebody like, say, the outside receiver there, Marshall or Beckham, is running like a, a, an inside double post or something like that, he won't be aware of that because it's going to be run over his head and past him. So he won't cover if somebody's coming in from here deep. So you really have to pay attention to that. Uh, but like I said, you can leave him like this. I like to put him on a man either on the uh, the, the R1 route in the slot or a lot of times I'll put him on a man uh, to the running back if I think it's going to be a run and then I bring him down the box here. If it's a run, he'll play that run so much better as a man. If the running back stays in, he'll have to actually go after the quarterback most of the time, which is pretty cool. Um, if, it's a, if it's a pass, uh, you'll get an extra blitzer. Uh, but that's really, you know, when, whatever you decide to do with him, you really have to be aware of that. And you have to be aware of any deep routes and cover deep middle, whether, um, you know, you just have to keep an eye on the outside receivers to make sure they're not doing that. But I'm typically going to cover this guy here over the tight end. I'll cover the tight end or I'll cover the slot, whoever comes in my area. But I really have to be aware of Marshall or Beckham uh, doing something uh, over my head. So that's, that's really how the defense This is formation right here. Uh, I'm going to show you how you can use it to, to be a blitz. You can use it to uh, use it in man coverage, zone coverage, whatever. Uh, but for right now, I'm going to show you a play. Like I said, it might look familiar to some of you. It's the three Sam Will Blitz. So base line would be the first adjustment that I would say is changing. I, I didn't say that last year. This year, I would say that. Other than that, um, I would say that your, uh, your safety here in the previous year, I brought him down the box. That's fine. But I don't think it's necessary. I think for run defense, it's better just to leave him right here. Um, I don't want him outside anymore. Last year, I said have him outside for outside runs. This year, I think that's not the way to go. I think you want him inside uh, to help you with runs. Because like I said, this is relatively effective. 
uh, if you're being outmatched in size, uh, but you need guys in the middle. As far as the weak box system goes, they kill at the point of attack. Uh, if, if that's what happens, uh, if you get, you know, if the game decides it, your defensive lineman will get pancaked, but your, your, your backers behind will not in the same way. They won't get reached as quick, and they'll be able to fill the holes. So that's, the, that's one way I would do it. If you think it's going to be a run, I say you saw how I picked Irvin up and moved him outside. Um, if you think it's an outside run, it's a good idea to have him outside a little bit, but if you think it's an inside run, I move him off the line just so he's, uh, you know, like I said, he's not in that first wave of guys I getting smashed. I just want to show this base D real quick against um, an obvious, obvious disadvantage here uh, to see how it works against, um, you know, against uh, the weak box system. So let's go ahead and let's run this. Like I said, that's I have two tight ends and a fullback here. Your outside zones are Amerson, who's a corner, and a safety who should be able to handle that relatively easily, where a lot of other nickel defenses have linebackers doing it, and they just get pooped on. So that's what makes this defense especially uh, good against... Um, against uh, passing formations as well. I think that in any scenario you need an additional guy helping you out in the middle and I've said that in my tip videos. You always need somebody to help you out. So in this scenario uh, what I would want is you know in typical fashion I would stand them all up uh, but I think that's overkill. I don't think you need three zone linebackers in this game this year. So what I meant by Mac being a free man uh, if you want to you can send him on a blitz um, it's not the most effective. It helps with a little bit of pressure. I'll show you an actual blitz later, uh, but he, that's one option you have with him. Another thing that I like to do with him is I like to man coverage him to the slot receiver. Now that, like I said, he's not going to uh, defend that slot receiver, um, you know, re as well as a cornerback would. But it, it, him in conjunction with some of these other zones, it just really helps, especially if somebody's running something like they're running a lot of cross patterns. If the, if you have a defender and they're in the direction, uh, they have such an advantage in the direction that the receiver's going, he typically will, will beat that guy to the punch. So you can man him like this if you want to. And another thing you can do is you can create a Mabel concept, which is basically just put him on a hard flat. So those are your three options with this outside defender. You notice that I'm using him on the open side of the field at all times. There's no reason to use that the other side um, guy because basically if somebody's running a route over there, it's most likely going to run out of space or they're going to run out of bounds once they catch the ball. There's no reason to do that. You want to leave that side and not worry about that. But the guy on the open side of the field, which is Mac, the free defender, you really have your choice which you want to do. You can also man him to the tight end. He'll cover it's a really the tight simple end uh, setup is the cover two invert the one right there at the top so basically this play setup is really simple this this formation by itself is just such a good run stopping defense up the center i don't know what it is and it's really capable for outside too I mean, if i move if i motion these guys out and i can do that from time to time for outside runs or for um just the flat coverages to get out there a little bit quicker uh, i can see i forgot to substitute my safety here i, I was going to say to make sure you have a good speedy safety out here uh, but this is fine. A die is a decent safety. He's just really slow. So I'll, I'll make that adjustment in a minute. But either way, um, you know, you can go cloud flats like it's set up here. Hard flats is pretty decent too. Uh, that's really up to you though. That's not a huge adjustment. That's just something you're going to want to figure out. Uh, but the, basically the adjustment that I'm going to make is all going to be centered around this guy. This guy here, this free safety, should be the best safety or the best player on your team because he's going to do everything. The first thing I want to do is I want to bring him down the box, just like you're seeing here. He's going to be my middle linebacker, and I'm not going to be using him. I mean, I could, I guess, but that's not really the point. The point here is I'm going to bring him down the box, and he's going to be my gadget man. He's going to be Mr. Do Everything. Uh, basically, if I think it's going to be a run play or if I think that the, um, the best uh, you know, say they're hitting the running back a lot. Uh, this guy right here is really going to be best suited to uh, man up to the running back. And that, like if it's a toss or something like that, the computer takes a few seconds to read it. But if it's a man coverage, he'll chase that down right away because it's his man to cover. So that's a really good way to uh, to user, not user, to put a guy um, in a good position to make a play, uh, whether it's a run or a pass. If it's a pass, obviously he's gonna sniff out a flat or whatever, but uh, but he's, like I say, he's a free man. I'm gonna have a lot of adjustments with this guy. Uh, but that's one of my more favorite ones to do. It really helps with the run. Plus him being down the box, I mean, you'll see how many plays he makes when I run this play in a few seconds. Him being down the box is just huge. As you can see also, look at the size advantage that I have here. This is the guy I'm gonna be using. I'm going to be using strong side either to the tight end or to the slot um, which is you know something that uh, uh, you know obviously you typically want to cover uh, the lane where the tight end or the slot is pretty much in the beginning anyway but either way this is the look 
I'm not saying that this is always where you want to go with this safety. Another thing you can do with this safety, say somebody's beating you with like a deep double post, all you really got to do is put this same safety, I think I hit the wrong button there, put him on a man coverage, and you can put him to, the, to, the, to Conley, or you can put him to Hill. It really doesn't matter. It's really up to you. Um, I don't really typically do it that way. I find he's best to either to either put in a man coverage on the running back, like I said, or even on Kelsey, say the tight end. Uh, if it's a lot of crossing uh, tight end routes, he's really good to just leave over in this area and let him let him cross man it. Uh, if there's a slot receiver, say in between Hill and the offensive line, he's really good to do that. But like I said, you really need playmaking safeties, and I don't really think I have a lot of speed uh, at the safeties in uh, in San Diego right now. Uh, but that's really it. I mean, as far as your adjustments, uh, you know, there, you can, you know. There's, there's no real adjustment. Like this, this, this defensive front essentially is one of the better run-stopping fronts as it is. But you know, look, look how I have here. I mean, I have. It's basically a cover two. Once you bring Lowry down, it's essentially just a regular cover two. Uh, my assignments change a little bit. I have to, I have to mention this. Um, I have to be sure if I do this that I cover the deep middle here if it's there. Uh, that really is important because that's now my responsibility. So if I do have to do that from time to time, it's not a bad idea to stand up uh, Joey Bosa here or a defensive end in my stead so that I do have the freedom to uh, to drop deep center because that is going to be my responsibility. So make sure you got a fast middle linebacker. Uh, but as long as you're aware of that and you're a decent user, you can set that up with no problem. And like I said, I still really like Hunt here. But look at this. I got nine guys in the box. I mean, how many defenses have nine guys in the box? And it's totally unnecessary because this defense, even with Lowry back, will shut down the same way. So this is just one of the best run defenses, and it's just one of the most capable pass defenses too. 